definition of rational versus irrational numbers. Um, and you need to be able to define and identify rational and irrational numbers. So some vocabulary you need to know. Rational mean, means that it makes sense, that it has a rule that it can follow, that there's um, things that can be appro or appropriately followed. Irrational, that looks a whole, like, a whole lot like Miss Wood. I think we should just change that picture. Irrational means it's crazy. It doesn't make sense. There's not really a rule that we can put in place to follow every single time with irrational numbers. And so we're going to come up with an answer as to what an irrational number is, a definition. A ratio can be written as a fraction or a um, relationship of numbers. Terminating decimal. Terminating means it ends. A repeating decimal means it goes on forever. And the square root, obviously, we talked about those as radicals. So we can sort these in a variety of ways. Um, we can pick them up and move them around. So we can sort them by fraction and whole number. We can sort them by putting radicals. We can sort them... Um, I don't see any negatives, so we can't really do positives and negatives. But we could do whole numbers and not whole numbers. So there's a variety of different ways. Well, one of the ways that we want to actually sort those is by doing them as rational numbers. And which ones are rational and which ones are not rational. So rational numbers, because you see the root ratio in that word, can be written as a ratio. And a ratio is actually a simple fraction. It can simply be written as two whole numbers on top of it. And there are thousands upon thousands of examples of rational numbers, decimals, whole numbers, any fraction. It's fairly simple. But it can be any terminating decimal. What does it mean that it terminates? It means that it ends. So we can see that it ends at 3. We can see that it ends at 7. We can see that it ends at 3. These are terminating decimals. Now, many times your calculators will not terminate, they will repeat, and your calculator will simply round. That is not a terminating decimal. If it's a repeating decimal, that's different. A repeating decimal looks like these. So a repeating decimal means that this would be 0.333333333333333333 forever and ever and ever and ever. This would be 4.6666666666666 forever and ever. Now this is the 1 and the 3 being repeated, so that's going to be 7.13131313131313 forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And your calculators very well may round for you. Irrational numbers cannot be written as a fraction. They will go on forever and ever and ever, and it depends upon, really, the length of your calculator screen as to how many decimals it will show you. Now, I have always said um, we have to use 3.14159. In fact, as a seventh grader, if you don't use a pi button in your calculator, you must use 3.14159. That is what the state of Indiana has expected of you. If you use 3.14, it is not precise enough. So you must use 3.14159, but you know what? I've memorized 3.14159.2653. I have no idea what the rest of them are, but if you've seen Life of Pi, you can see that there are people who have literally memorized hundreds upon thousands of digits of pi. Um, irrational numbers also are non-perfect squares. So we talked about radicals, non-perfect squares. So square root of 1 is a perfect square because that can be turned into 1, which is 1 over 1, which is a ratio. Square root of 2, it's somewhere in between. Square root of 3 is also somewhere in between. Square root of 4 can be written as a rational number because that one is 2, which is 2 over 1. So we have to remember what our perfect squares are in talking about rational and irrational numbers. So the square roots of any non-perfect square of is irrational. Pi, anything with pi. So 5 pi, 7 pi, um, pi divided by 3, pi divided by 4, anything with pi is also irrational. And a number that goes on forever and ever without repeating is irrational, and those ones end with dot, dot, dot. So you can see that there's a pattern here. So it will not repeat. It'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not repeating, but it does go on forever. And this one, there's not a repeating, but it's going on forever. All right, so each of these numbers indicate whether they're rational or irrational. The first thing, the easiest way is to 
figure out irrational ones. Everything else is rational. There's too many examples for rational. All right, so irrational numbers are non-perfect squares, pies, and then our dot, dot, dots. Well, pi, oh, wait, that's irrational. Oh, wait, there's a pi. Oh, wait, but it's a perfect square. So this one's actually 21 over 2, which, oh, wait, that's rational. Um, is 30 a perfect square? Nope, it's irrational. And then everything else is rational. It doesn't matter if it's positive. It doesn't matter if it's negative. It's rational. So you're going to be expected to define whether or not a number is rational or irrational. You need to be able to sort a set of numbers as to rational or irrational. And uh, that's the expectation.